All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here. My name is Dr. Nathan Boonstra. I'm a general pediatrician here at uh, Blank Children's Hospital in Des Moines. And I wanna welcome everybody to vaccinate the heartland today. We have people all from all over the Midwest. We have people from uh, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Wisconsin, Illinois, Minnesota, Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Kansas here. And we're coming together to learn a little bit about vaccines. We're coming here to celebrate uh, the importance of vaccines and what they have done for the Midwest, for our country and for the world. And we are here to listen to some fantastic uh, speakers. We've got some interviews tonight. We've got some recorded videos. Uh, we also have a, a video contest that we'll get to here in a little bit. So there's a few things you can do during the event tonight, you can get onto some social media, you can get on Twitter, Instagram, you can use the hashtag Vax the Heartland, that's V-A-X the Heartland, uh, to tweet about your experience tonight about the importance of vaccines. And we'll also be voting on some great videos and awarding two monetary prizes for the biggest vote getters. So right now, before voting starts, I want you to text VAX the heart 691 like it says on your screen to 22333. And by the way, this just in, uh, the people, there's a lot of people behind the scenes that are working to make this happen. And I'm getting a feed that uh, uh, newsflash that Twitter is apparently broken. So somehow with all the things going on tonight, and we thank you for being here listening to this one and watching this one with all the things, we all broke Twitter. So maybe use mostly Instagram. You can use hashtags on whatever your uh, uh, social media choice is tonight. Uh, let's get started. Uh, I wanna introduce my friend and fellow vaccine advocate, Dr. Nathan Chamelo. Uh, Dr. Nate, are you there? Sure am, Dr. Nathan. How are you doing tonight? Um, as well as can be expected amidst everything we're facing. Yeah, understandable. Now I noticed your bow tie. I'm, I'm not wearing my bow tie, though I am relatively new to the bow tie scene. Uh, I, I feel like, especially with all the changes, I haven't gotten to wear as many bow ties as I usually do. Is that your favorite bow tie or do you have a bow tie that you consider your favorite bow tie? Um, I, I don't have a favorite one. I like to kind of match it to the moment. Um, there's a couple ones that have been gifted to me, which I have particularly special. And then I learned to really, I kind of really mastered tying bow ties um, when mm -hmm. I was actually on paternity leave and kind of made myself just practice it over and over. And, uh, and so there's a couple from my practice days that are pretty, pretty special. This is just a fun one in my support yes. of science. I don't know if you can tell. I love it. So you are a pediatrician. You're the medical director of Minnesota's Medicaid and Minnesota Care Program. Uh, you're an advocate for literacy and health equity and vaccines. So tell us a little bit about vaccines tonight in your experience. Yeah, I wanted to uh, start off by uh, showing a picture here. Of, I don't know if you can see it. This is Soraya. I've had uh, the honor of watching Soraya grow. She, she drew me this picture and name changed, obviously. But um, I've had the, the pleasure of watching her grow and helping her parents keep her healthy along the way. And, and one of the main ways we keep children healthy is ensuring they get their shots on time and every time. And so we know that you know, shots help protect us from a number of different diseases. As you can see there, they uh, keep us healthy and safe and even save lives. But it's important that we also get our shots too. And so this is now switching to my art and this is picture of me getting my shot, my flu shot this season. And see, you know, what happens is when we are all up to date on our vaccines, we have an additional level of protection. Again, uh, credit to me for this awesome art. Uh, and so uh, it's called community immunity. And so when most people in a community are vaccinated, infections don't have anywhere to go. And so this makes the chances that if you get a serious vaccine preventable illness from someone else, uh, very low. And think of all the places we are looking forward to getting back to uh, when we're done with the pandemic. And so whether it's being around other children at school or daycare, around someone at your place of worship or just outside at a park, museum or store, our, our community immunity 
is what helps keep us all safe. And so this is you know, particularly important to me because I'm also a dad. And so um, my son's a little young. So this is when I asked him to draw a picture of our family, this is what we came up with. But um, he was born two months early. And so you know, early in his life, he was at increased risk um, from all sorts of infections. And we made sure he got his shots as soon as possible, including the flu shot. Um, and so did we. And on top of that, we depended on our community immunity to help keep him safe. And so his, he's older now and his risk is lower, but there are so many other newborns, those who are born premature, other community members like those battling or who have survived cancer, uh, who have, uh, are taking certain medications or can't get their own shots because of a medical condition, who really depend on us to help take care of them. And so as we move around our heartland hearing about the wonders of vaccines, let's not miss our shots to build our community immunity. And so I just want to thank everyone for joining Voices for Vaccines and from my family to yours. Thank you for getting your shots. Thank you so much, Dr. Jomo. Uh, and thank you for all that you do just north of us. We really, pre I, as an Iowan, appreciate all of your advocacy as well. So thank you so much. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. All right, it is time now for the first submission in our video contest. Now, in order to vote, you needed to text, you need to still, you can still text VAX the Heart 691, all caps, to 22333. So our first video called Get Vaccinated comes to us from Matt in Minnesota. Uh, to vote for Get Vaccinated, you're gonna text VAX the Heart 691 to 22333. And then, and then once you've done that, you're going to text "get you are" for this video. G E T U R, all caps, to two two three three three. Let's take it away. I threw a wish in the well. Don't ask me, I'll never tell. I looked at you as it fell, and now you're in my way. I'd trade my soul for a wish, pennies and dimes to assist. I wasn't looking for this, and now you're in my way. Your stare was cold and sleep up in was showing. Nurse, doc, they were knowing where you think we're going, baby. Hey, I just met you, and we debated. But here's a notion, get vaccinated. Your reservations were clearly stated, and yet you should get vaccinated. It isn't truly that complicated. Just get your children vaccinated. Matt, thank you so uh, much. Senator Dave Burke, I represent the 26th Senate District, which is Union, Marion, Morrow, Wyandotte, Crawford, Seneca, and Sandusky counties. As I like to say in the real world, I'm also a pharmacist, so giving vaccines here at my pharmacy is part of what we do. Even simple things like influenza, the seasonal flu, stopping the spread of that is critical to maintaining the health and safety of our vulnerable population as well as our, as our seniors. I think folks are now realizing with COVID how many people die from the flu on an annual basis. It's kind of an awakening for affected uh, populations. But quickly, I'd like to cover some real real fast talking points about why vaccines are important. The first, looking towards your child or grandchildren, uh, getting children vaccinated is a key step for communal uh, immunity. Things like chicken pox, mumps, measles, whooping cough, right, rubella, the things that we don't really talk about much anymore uh, used to plague children. As a matter of fact, we would put them together in a room so they would actually get it. Um, vaccines are a way to avoid that and to keep your child healthy uh, it is definitely a ounce of prevention is a pound of cure kind of concept. The second thing deals with vaccine safety. Uh, there have been massive improvements over the last couple decades dealing with vaccines and their safety and effectiveness. Uh, issues around ADHD or attention deficit disorder or autism have all been scientifically proven not to be linked. Uh, there are studies that have gone on for quite some time that have shown that these are safe and effective and do not cause uh, illnesses in that regard. Now, are they 100% perfect? No, there are rare cases where people have allergic reactions, but 
out of all the people that get vaccinated, they are so small and we really screen people deeply and thoroughly before we give them vaccines uh, to make sure that they are prime candidates for getting vaccines. Secondly, or thirdly rather, vaccines can save your family time and money, whether it's a child or an adult. When you don't incur health care costs, it allows you to continue working and to reduce your expenses when it comes to paying out of pocket, whether that's through the urgent care, emergency room, or a simple doctor's visit. When you get vaccines on a well baby check or when you're in for your annual physical, it actually adds value to your work and family's life by avoiding these diseases. I'll close on saying that Hopefully a COVID vaccine will be out soon and hopefully people have the trust and confidence to get it. Unless you have a medical or religious reason to not get vaccinated, I highly encourage it. And I can tell you that I'll be one of the ones in the front of the line to get that done because I want to keep my family safe and I want to continue working. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Senator Burke, for your remarks and thank you for being a fantastic partner in immunizing through your pharmacy. Uh, I have an Instagram update, all right, at the hashtag VaxTheHeartland. This is from Iowa Cancer Consortium. They say, excited to attend the Vaccinate the Heartland event tonight. Find additional info by searching Iowa Immunization Coalition, hashtag CancerIowa, hashtag VaxTheHeartland, hashtag this is public health. And another update, Twitter is working again. Good job out there if you've fixed Twitter. We appreciate it. Uh, next up, we have Lily Taylor from Minnesota. At age 26, Lily Taylor was diagnosed with cervical cancer and was forced to consider whether or not she might have children while she underwent chemo and radiation treatments. She lives in Minnesota with her boyfriend and her dogs. Lily, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, I'm asked to, if you have a click to put on speaker view, you should do that. If Which, you can't figure that out, that's okay. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Sorry. Okay, uh, that's all right. Yeah. Um, I am also going to ask you about um, where do you feel like the best place in Minnesota is to camp? Uh, I would have to say probably any one of our state parks uh, because they allow dogs. So you can bring your dog to go Let's hiking see. in the state parks. Okay, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, would you mind sharing your story with us tonight? Yes, absolutely. Um, so like Nathan said, at 26, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer. Um, at the age of 26, my friends were going to concerts, getting together for brunches, movies, and barbecues. Um, I, on the other hand, had to decide whether or not to freeze my eggs so I could become pregnant at some later point. Um, but instead, in my fear, I decided just to move forward with treatment. This is a decision I regret doing almost every day of my life now. I um, went through chemo, daily radiation, internal radiation, and then another round of chemo where I lost all my hair. Um, I have to say it was and is embarrassing to have cancer in the genital area. My sexual history was put into question by some of my friends and family members. Um, and it was hard for me to talk about anything going on because most of my treatment was in or, in or around my vagina. I really felt alone, embarrassed, and to be quite honest, scared. Um, so now, since being in remission, I have made it a goal to do anything I can to prevent this from happening to another woman. I have started a support group for women with cervical and vaginal cancer, and also I'm here tonight sharing my story, not so you can feel bad for me, but to empower you with knowledge. This disease is preventable um, between pap smears, HPV screenings, and most essential, the HPV vaccine. Vaccines need our attention more than ever. I did not get the HPV vaccine when I was a teenager because it wasn't available, but it is now. Both boys and girls should get the HPV vaccines and I am living proof of the consequences that if it doesn't happen. And that's my thing, thank you. Lily, thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about HPV uh, tonight because we have Kirk and Brenda Forbes from Indiana. Their daughter, Kristen, was featured in the documentary, Someone You Love, which everybody should go and check out uh, about her battle with HPV caused cervical cancer. Uh, they live in Indiana, as I mentioned, they've appeared on the Dr. Oz show and other uh, venues and work to educate the public about HPV 
cause cancers. So Kirk and Brenda, thank you so much for your work. And will you also share with us your story tonight? Yes. Good evening, everyone. We're Kirk and Brenda Forbes. We have three children, Megan, Eric, and Kristen. Kristen is why we're sharing our story tonight. Back in 2007, our family knew nothing about HPV or the Gardasil vaccine, which had been approved the year before. Our daughter, Kristen, was 22 years old. She just opened a new chapter in her life, fresh out of college, a promising career with Walgreens and management. And then the very next month, she called me to wish me happy Father, Father's Day. And she started to cry on the phone and I asked her what was upsetting her. And she said, Dad, my right ankle and leg have swollen and I have no idea why. Well, we spent the next month trying to get a diagnosis and unfortunately the bad news came in and it was advanced stage 3C cervical cancer caused by HPV. At that moment, the battle began for Kristen and 11 months later, we said goodbye to her on June 1st, 2008. During the 11 months of Kristen's fight, she had 14 procedures and surgeries. She had to deal with radiation and chemo and side effects. She was on 18 drugs to deal with the cancer and the side effects from the treatments. Kristen left 17 personal journeys written since middle school. The last two were about her cancer a year. We used those, the last two journals and our notes and created a story in the book titled Love Kristen. We wanted to share Kristen's courageous story and educate others about HPV and the vaccine, which was now available. Kristen said that she had had a pap exam just 18 months prior to her diagnosis. A year after we wrote Kristen's book, Brenda and I created the Kristen Forbes E Foundation. E stands for Educate and Screen, Vaccinate, and Eradicate. Yes, we have the power to eradicate not only genital warts, but six HPV-caused cancers with the vaccination. We have the most recent initiative of the foundation is the release of the highly acclaimed award-winning documentary, Someone You Love, The HPV Epidemic. Kristen is one of the five women profiled in the film. It's available to watch online. The Indiana Immunization Coalition and 19 other states have purchased unlimited license for viewings within their state. Continuing medical education credits are available for most medical personnel. If we can prevent one more Kristen experience with this vaccine, then we have saved another life. This is why the HPV vaccine and all vaccines are very important. We are a family who always had their children vaccinated. We depended on the doctor to tell us what vaccinations were necessary, and we always had them done. We've always been blessed with healthy children. None of them ever had a serious reaction to any of the vaccinations. We will always be supporters of vaccines to protect our children and our adults. Thank you. Kirk and Brenda, I want to th thank you so much for being here tonight, and thank you for being willing to share your story. And I want to urge everybody out there to go to hpvepidemic.com and watch the documentary, Someone You Love. Right, we have next uh, our next video submission for our, context, uh, our contest, which comes from Sam and Charlie in Iowa. It's called Shoot a Goal and Get Vaccinated. To vote for this video, you're going to text GOAL, G-O-A-L, to 22333. Hi, I'm Jackie Easy McGee. I am the state health chair for the Iowa Nebraska NAACP Conference of Grand Jets. We are here to encourage you this year to get your flu shot. This year, more than any other, it is important to be protected. It's a deadly combination with the flu and the coronavirus. If you feel uncomfortable going to your doctor's office or clinic, there are many other sites where you can get your flu shot, including drive-through clinics. Remember, we are done dying.
Thank you so much, Jackie. I'm also in Iowa. I did, in fact, get my flu shot done. I hope that everybody out there gets their flu shot done right away. Now is the time. Uh, we have another Twitter update. All right. So in the uh, <laughs> vacillating saga of Twitter, apparently it is working for some people and not others. It's like the Millennium Falcon. You never know if it's going to work when you want it to. Um, anyway, uh, we will retweet anybody who uh, tweets at the Vax the Heartland hashtag. Um, so if you can get Twitter to work, we'll do our best to retweet you. Uh, we have a, one uh, uh, social media update uh, from our own Wendy Sue Swanson, MD. Uh, she, uh, I presume, tweeted, I think, uh, you're watching a presidential special? Choose something more scientific. Hashtag vaccines work. The importance of vaccines here in the Midwest. Online now with hashtag Vax the Heartland with fellow scientific enthusiasts and she'll be speaking and, and speaking in a few minutes. All right, and that few minutes is literally now. So I have next up uh, Dr. Wendy Sue Swanson, who is the fabulous Madison, Wisconsin mama doc, known for her social media smarts uh, and her, her medical acumen. Dr. Swanson, how are you? <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Nathan. I'm okay. You know, like all of you, and I think like um, Nate was saying earlier, you know, this is this is kind of brutal. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's a rough time. And I, I have to say, you know, I was in Seattle for years. I was I was born and raised in Minnesota, and mm -hmm. coming back to the heartland has been really quite a bounty uh, for me personally. And I'm really happy to be with all of you, and I I'm I'm loving it. So thanks. you said coming back to the heartland, were you in, where were you before? I was in Seattle for 16 years. So that's where right. I did training and that's where I started Seattle Mama Doc. And when I started really writing, I started writing that blog, Seattle mm -hmm. Mama Doc. I wrote it for 10 years and mm -hmm. spent about 10% of my time on it, writing every week about vaccine science and safety and writing about pacifiers and sleep, but recognizing that parents were starting to realize that they should, they felt this kind of onus to do their own research. And sure. I don't sincerely believe you do have to do your own research. I do think you can get a ton of trust from pediatricians, family practice clinicians, surgeons, and all of you like vaccine enthusiasts. But I always wanted to help families kind of do the research for them, put all the research together and tell the story kind of mom to mom or mom to parent, what have you. So. Okay, well, thank you for being here. Do you have, uh, I feel like I kind of launched you already into talking about vaccines. Do you have more to tell us tonight? Oh yeah, I was hoping you were asking me about cheese or camping or I something. I was going to. Okay, so I will ask that because what I was trying to get at was you said you returned to the Midwest, right? Where were you before going out to Seattle? Uh, before, well, I was born and raised in Minnesota. Spent a okay. lot of time in the Boundary Got Waters. It. Put a heads up for that because we're fighting a fight in the Boundary Waters and then was in um, California nice. for a bit of time and then Pennsylvania for medical school. All right, my, uh, my producer is telling me to tell you, Minnesota huh? is the best, tell her I said that, so. You know, it is. No, it's hard <laughs> right next door here in Wisconsin, but um, you know, the cheese heads and uh, pe people are so friendly and, and we're really loving it, but, but I right. I'm here to talk about I'm gonna it. I'm gonna mute myself and let you talk a little bit more, yeah, okay? Good. Well, I just want to say, you know, I've been really moved by the stories and I think Lily did such a beautiful job too, talking about vaccines in a really straightforward way. You know, when it comes to HPV vaccine, for example, we started vaccinating with HPV vaccine right when I started in clinical practice as a pediatrician in, in 2006. And I remember families just saying they could wait, it didn't matter, they didn't need it right then, they were making these judgments about behavior. And of course, viruses are viruses and vaccines um, are, you know, against viruses and they're against different bacteria, but they're scientifically developed and smarter than ever before. And, you know, when people worry about vaccines and when I've, you know, I've written like 800 blog posts and done thousands of YouTube videos and spent lots of time on social media in the last decade, I always want every family to get the respect that they deserve when they're scared about something they're to be listened to. So if you're scared about something, when it comes to vaccines, ask any question that you need to, you know, your healthcare provider, any organization here today, any organization online from the American Academy of Pediatrics to the CDC, do a really good job even explaining. And if you have the question, someone likely has had the question before you. 
each and every one of us is so unsettled now more than ever because of the threats of infectious diseases and vaccines have afforded us this amazing opportunity. We all deserve to have vaccines be safe and effective and convenient. And it takes all three of those. You know, you can count on the CDC and the Academy of Pediatrics and what's called ASEP organizations that independently help us determine when vaccines are safe and ready to go. And, you know, right now with COVID-19 and the pandemic and our overwhelming threat and kind of, you know, upheaval to life, you can count on your pediatricians, for example, for your kids to tell you when it is prime time and when it is the right vaccine for kids. You know, kids are gonna be last into some of these clinical trials and they're likely not gonna be the first ones vaccinated. But those of you who are over the age of 60, for example, have underlying health problems, we want you in line first, like the healthcare workers, but we'll tell you when it's time. You know, trust is everything, right? And I think of anything too, I've learned that we know, you know, I can, as a doctor, talk at you, but I think those of us who are really excited about the protections that come from vaccines, knowing to the point earlier that they're not perfect, that when you get a flu vaccine each year, it's about 50 to 60% effective, but 50 to 60% is a lot better than 0% protection and really creates, you know, this opportunity. So I always get vaccinated as early as I can. You know, these are essential vaccines or we wouldn't recommend them. And when it comes to things like influenza or the flu vaccine, you know, they're every year vaccines because of the changes. My family gets immunized every year before Halloween. And that safe, effective and convenient thing I was talking about in, in Wisconsin, what's so amazing is you can get vaccines at pharmacies for your kids once they're two years of age. So you don't even have to wait in line if your doctor's office is slammed or you don't even wanna be in a doctor's office. You can mask up. We did our vaccines at our school this year outside. The world is changing that way. But I wanna say one thing, I wrote a blog post a long time ago and I was thinking about Lily comments and the beautiful family tribute that's so moving. I was thinking, I wrote a post one time called Every Illness is a Love Story. And I think every illness is a love story. You know, when someone we love hurts, um, we care deeply about it. And what's so hard about prevention is that it's kind of the avoidance of that pain without you even recognizing that the pain could affect you. And I, I think we've heard some nice stories, but I just wanted to, I'm no, I'm no Nate with the children art, but while you guys were talking, I made this little sign and I was thinking like, oh, was it backwards? Can I do it this way? Yeah. It looks okay to us. You yeah. can flip it back the way well, it was. Back, okay, it good. looks backwards okay. to you, but it's okay to us. I know we were talking about this earlier, this hard math, right? So prevention is actually a love letter. And I was thinking like, you know, prevention is your opportunity to send a love letter to your kids, to get your grandparents or your parents immunized for, for flu right now. So you're not confused with a fever or scared or in the ER because you don't know what it is. And when the COVID vaccine is prime time and we help you know when it is, that's a love letter to everyone you know and to yourself. So, you know, we're talking so much about self-care right now too, but vaccines will provide you some freedoms. It's not everything we're going to use, hand, we're wash our hands, we're going to wear masks, but the time when you're immunized, you can feel that much safer and feel that much more freedom. And after all this caged in, I think we have these great opportunities. So thank you guys for everyone in the heartland and let me know if I can ever help you online and um, go get your immunization. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Swanson, for your enthusiasm and your message. And um, we, let's see, I actually have an autographed copy of Dr. Swanson's book, if I remember correctly. It's called Mama Doc Medicine, so you can look for that uh, uh, at a, you know, online retailer near you. So uh, the uh, next guest that we have is uh, Fran Rice from South Dakota. She's the executive director at Health Connect of South Dakota. Fran, are you there? I am here. How are, How you? are you doing? I'm, I'm very inspired by these stories that I've heard prior to yeah, me. Yeah, it's really so, fantastic to be able to bring everybody together. Yes, yes, it is. It's very energizing. Now, how is South Dakota? South Dakota is a little cool today, but, okay. um, you know, we're, we're kind of going with everybody else. Who knows what the weather will be tomorrow? <laughs> Can you tell us what your favorite part of living in South Dakota is? My favorite part of living in South Dakota is having open spaces. I'm originally from the nice. East Coast. And mm -hmm. so I like having space. There's a lot, I've driven through a lot of that <laughs> space before. I've felt it. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So what would you like to talk about tonight? Oh, well, I'm going to share my story. I, I uh, have some history in this area. So I'm ready to Go say right hi. I'm, I'm Fran from Health Connect. You already introduced me. 
Um, Health Connect is a consumer public health library located here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And part of what I do is I serve as a member of the Sioux Falls Area Immunization Coalition. We're actually transferring, uh, transitioning that into a statewide coalition, which will be similar to some of the other coalitions that have already spoke. And our coalition is going to be called Immunize South Dakota. Our South, uh, Immunize South Dakota is a growing coalition of healthcare professionals, advocates, scientists, parents, and community members, like some of you folks that have spoke already. The focus of Immunize South Dakota is to be a trusted source of information on immunizations and vaccine preventable diseases. Immunize South Dakota has the vision to eliminate suffering due to vaccine preventable diseases based on several convictions, such as to use evidence-based factual information about vaccines and vaccine preventable diseases to endorse the rigorous safety protocols that were mentioned earlier by someone um, in vaccine production and to increase the public's confidence in vaccine safety. So for my work as a medical librarian, I have not found clinical evidence that challenges the action of vaccinating over the critical need for public health. Approaching vaccinations with knowledge is critical to anyone. If you have a language barrier, ask your medical librarian to assist you. There are resources available in multiple languages. Ask questions of your healthcare professionals. Use the National Library of Medicine's website, which is made for consumers called Medline Plus. Importantly, be informed and know yourself. As some of the other speakers mentioned, talk to your healthcare professionals, talk to your pharmacist. Remember that everyone is different. So do not base your experiences with vaccines on someone else's va vaccine experience. But your decision to be vaccinated can save many around you. We've heard this, whether it's at your home, at your workplace, or in your community. So be proactive and connect to community outreach activities that help you with not only understanding a vaccine, but getting those vaccines and become educated. Immunize South Dakota is working tirelessly to increase the public's understanding of the benefits of vaccines and to build stronger awareness about vaccine preventable diseases. And to do this, we actively address barriers to access. Someone had mentioned the drive-through flu shot clinics. And we encourage increased opportunities for everyone in our state to be current on the vaccinations, no matter what their age. So the depth of our immunized South Dakota coalition membership is impressive but we can always use additional champions. So we hope some of you on the, on the call today or on the webinar will be ready to join us. Thank you so much, Fran. I wanna yes, thank welcome. medical librarians everywhere. I think that uh, for me personally, they've been so helpful. I honestly do think that when, you know, you always hear from, you know, people do your research. And I honestly do think that when you hear vaccine myths, if you do a modicum of research by and get the help of people that really understand it, uh, those myths fall apart really quickly. So yep. thank you so much for everything that you're, you're doing welcome. in South Dakota. Have a good evening. Yep. Um, next up, we have our third video submission for our contest. This is titled Vaccinate and Stay Safe, and it is from Madison in Wisconsin. Uh, to vote for this video, you're going to text STAY SAFE to 22333. My name is Robin Gable. I'm the state representative for the 18th district in Illinois. As a lawmaker, I need to hear from people like you about vaccines. Many lawmakers only hear from those who are opposed to vaccinations. Immunizations prevent disease. To me, the best cure for a disease is never to get it in the first place. I remember when I was growing up, uh, there were diseases that were not preventable like measles, mumps, and chickenpox. I, my brother, my sister, and my friends, we all came down with those diseases. And we were in bed for weeks with each one, missing many days of school. Today, these diseases are preventable, and outbreaks are rare if you are up to date on your vaccines. So please talk to your provi healthcare provider today 
and uh, make sure that you're up to date on your vaccines. And it's flu season, so make sure you get your flu shot. Take care and be well. Thank you very much, Representative Gable. Um, everybody stay tuned because at the end of the program, we're gonna give you an easy way to reach out to your lawmakers. Uh, next tonight, we have Darby Peterson. Darby is a seventh grader living in Minnesota with his mom, dad, cats, dog, and brother. He's gonna to talk to us today about his experience with Crohn's disease. Darby, how are you? Good. Good, how is Minnesota these days? Um, kind of cold. Yeah, I, that's the thing that everybody says when I ask them about Minnesota. Even my producer says that when she mentions Minnesota. Um, I wanna hear about your pets. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Um, so my, my dog was a rescue and she's afraid of almost everything. And my cat is um, like eight years old, human mm -hmm. years. And then we got my grandpa's cat because he passed away. So. Oh, I see. All right. And you have a story to tell us about yourself tonight. Why don't you take it away? Tell us what you want to share. Uh, hi, my name is Darby. I'm 12 years old. I'm a seventh grader and I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was nine years old. I received IV infusions of Remicade, my Crohn's medication at the hospital every eight weeks. My Crohn's medication keeps my disease in remission. The other effect is lowering my immune system. Because my immune system is lowered, I rely on other people to make sure they get their vaccines. I'm lucky that I haven't gotten sick that many times since I started my Crohn's medication but sometimes I have gotten sick and I get a little scared. I don't know how sick I will get. And I also get scared that I could make other people sick. My parents, I know my parents worry about me. They worry that when I'm sick, my symptoms might get bad enough to bring me to the hospital. I, I know they worry that I might get other illnesses like measles or whooping cough. My grandpa got polio when I was a little kid. He always walked with a limp because his legs were damaged from polio. When he was older, he couldn't even walk and he was in a wheelchair. My dad has told me how hard polio was on my grandpa. I learned about the polio vaccine in third grade and I understand how the vaccine has minimalized polio from doing much damage anymore in our country. I believe that people should get vaccines because it's not my fault and I have a disease that, that um, is not is not fair on, that my immune system is lowered but it does mean that I need help from other people to get their vaccines. So I want to thank my friends who have gotten their vaccines. And I really want people to understand why vaccines are so important. Thank you. Darby, thank you so very much. We really appreciate you sharing with us tonight. Uh, next up, we have Ethan Lindenberger. Uh, Ethan is a teenager and a prominent vaccine advocate. When he became an adult, he got himself caught up on his immunizations in opposition to his parents' wishes and after his own thorough investigation of vaccination. He lives in Ohio. Ethan, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And Darby, it great. is fantastic uh, to talk to you. I usually am the youngest person in these meetings and wherever I go. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is actually the first time I have uh, had the luxury of not being the youngest person. And so um, I just want to point that out. And that was really awesome to see and really inspiring. Um, but yeah, I'm doing great. That was like a highlight right there. Um, and things are going, going great. So. All right. Well, tell us about your slightly, your, your, your story as a slightly older person. Yeah. Um, as someone who is slightly older, but still um, usually, you know, well and beyond the younger person in the, um, in the audience and in the groups of speakers I attend with. Um, my story is pretty simple. Um, just as you described, I grew up in an anti-vaccine household. And when I became of age, I got myself immunized. Um, this was a very personal decision that I didn't see um, having any massive impact. I just was concerned with the health and safety of myself, my family, and my community. And so because of that decision and the relationship I had with my mom, who um, was anti-vax and made the decision not to vaccinate myself or my family, uh, that conflict between the two of us ended up becoming a larger media story um, and kind of caught more of a 
nationwide global attention with the um, choice I made to get myself immunized. And that was months after I made that decision. And so it was a really wild experience to go from just being concerned with my own personal health and safety and what I knew was a responsibility I had to other people's health as well. And starting to speak publicly about that and the importance of um, making those decisions for yourself, of young people taking independence with their health, um, as well as the misinformation that led to my mom believing the things that convinced her vaccines were dangerous. Um, that was a big part of the advocacy that sprung up since then, and I've been doing for about two years now. Um, I'm only 20. I just turned 20 about two weeks ago, and I am very, very young and inexperienced in this field, but the community is very welcoming and amazing. Every single speaker here has a story and a voice that needs to be shared, um, but my voice and my story just relies on me telling you know, my personal experiences and the relationship I have with my mom and a decision that at the time I thought would go nowhere beyond the health department. And that's to me, the most inspiring part of my experience is that every single person in the audience, every single person that hears my story is in the same exact position I was two, three years ago, where I was just a normal kid in Norwalk, Ohio, who decided I needed to take my health into my own hands. That's the first step in any advocacy, any change, any movement is just deciding to stand up for the truth and doing what you know is right. Um, aside from that, I have spoken a lot about the anti-vaccine world, the misinformation that can plague the online social space, but also remaining empathetic when you're speaking to people like my own mother who believe things that are not true, um, even though their intentions might seem dangerous and malicious, uh, trying to look at the brighter side or assume that their intentions are good and, and just being kind of manipulated in some ways, um, trying to build bridges and not walls, I, um, so to say. That's a, the synopsis of what I do. And to me, that's the most important message to share is trying to create a world that's more kind while also standing up for what you know is true. Um, you'll see everyone speaking in this meeting and in any vaccine discussion will never kind of um, dilute their message and say that vaccines are nothing more or nothing less than the most important medical um, necessity that we have as a society and as a world. Vaccines are financially and institutionally and globally the most important um, way we have to prevent disease and honestly to make life expectancy and um, life experience better. So it's so important and everyone here listening and everyone speaking, you have my greatest thanks. So that's a little bit about me. That's my kind of take on things. And again, thank you everyone for being here. Ethan, thank you so much. Um, you have, I think, shown in this couple of minutes the kind of uh, approach that we can use, uh, that we can all learn from in terms of um, how to have constructive conversations with people who are hesitant. Um, and I know that you've done a TED Talk and there's other things that really people should get out there and listen yeah, to. Yeah, I should have plugged myself. There, on that's all right. <laughs> Go ahead if you want to. Anywhere else we should be looking for you? Yeah, I mean, you guys can follow me on Twitter, I guess. Uh, <laughs> underscore Lindenberger. I don't know. My TED Talk's uh, a really cool experience where I met the Surgeon General. I wore a hoodie and kind of just winged it. So, if anyone checks that out, you can just look up my name. But um, again, this is not about me. This is about our community and public health. And so, um, yeah, that's just one way I've uh, spoken about that and stuff like that is what I do all the time. And so check that out if you want, but I'm just glad to be here today. Okay. I did get a request if you want to answer this question or not, but uh, I, was a I was asked to ask you if your siblings have gotten vaccinated. Yeah, um, that is actually a really uh, great story that I'll really collapse here quickly. <laughs> Um, for, for my mom, who's anti-vaccine and um, believes that vaccines cause autism and a lot of large myths around uh, immunizations, I chose to speak to her very empathetically and decide to treat her um, in ways that was not reciprocated. So to say that she was um, a little upset and emotional towards my advocacy, thinking it was very dangerous, but I said that she was a good mother with good intentions, and I believe she's just misinformed. And that dialogue, even though some people would get really angry or frustrated, and, you know, deservedly so, be really offended by that dialogue. You know, anti-vaxxers can be really mean. Um, I chose to remain empathetic, and that was a big part of my message publicly as well. And my younger brother, Noah, who's a year younger than me, he got immunized. Um, my older brother, Isaac, is immunized. And I'm still speaking to the rest of my siblings and family about that decision that they can make. Um, and a large part of that and the trend I've seen with my family making those decisions and choosing to get immunized has been because I was kind and uh, caring towards my mother. And even though they didn't agree at the time, they were like, man, even if I don't know what to think, 
you're being really nice. And that's the takeaway that I saw my own family that I've seen a million times in other ways. Ethan, thank you so much for sharing. You're absolutely model to us all. Appreciate you being here tonight. All right, next up, we have the next video in our contest from Owen, Eleanor, and Simon in Wisconsin. It's titled Quick Shot. To vote for this video, you will text Quick Shot to 22333. on a video for this program I'm doing called Vaccinate the Heartland. Yeah, I mean, I could just say, hi, I'm Dr. Nicole Baldwin. I'm a pediatrician from Ohio. And then kind of go into the reasons why I think it's important for people to vaccinate their kids and why vaccines work. But I just kind of want to do something a little different. I mean, I do like costumes. And it is almost Halloween. I wonder how that would go. Now, Peter, I must ask before we take flight if you and your pal Tinkerbell are up to date on your immunizations. Because while I understand that diseases are rare these days thanks to vaccinations, illnesses such as polio and measles are just a flight away. So it's so important to maintain our vaccinations to protect both ourselves and our family members from vaccine preventable diseases. Now, Beast, did I just hear you say that you're worried about the antigens that are in your vaccines? You know, I was reading a book in your library today about that subject. Did you know that the word antigen comes from antibody generator? So there are all kinds of things that are antigens in our environment. When we get a cold, we're exposed to antigens. When we get strep throat, we're exposed to antigens. And you licking those paws at the dinner table, that's exposing you to more antigens than what are in your vaccines. Another fun fact I read in that book was that 40 years ago, we had so many more antigens in vaccines than we do today, even though we prevent so many more illnesses because vaccines have become more purified. So no need to worry about those antigens, beast. Lion, did I hear you say you're afraid of shots? Well, do you know what's scarier than shots? Diseases like measles and meningitis and tetanus. That's why it's so important that we get our vaccines to keep us healthy and protected from illnesses that can make us very sick. And do you know what? If you're afraid of the pokes of a shot, that's okay. I will go with you to the doctor and hold your hand. Now, Sadness, you seem extra glum today. What's the matter? You're due for some vaccines and you're worried that you can't go to the doctor's office because of coronavirus? I've got great news for you. Doctor's offices around the country are doing everything they can to keep their offices safe and clean and especially healthy for their patients. So it's perfectly safe for you to call your doctor today and get caught up on those vaccines. So come on, Sadness, let's go call the doctor. Yeah, I thought about it. I just feel like that's a lot of work. I think I'll probably just do the regular traditional video. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.
Thank you so much, Dr. Nicole, Wendy, Bell, Dorothy, Joy, Baldwin. Uh, I think you've given us all some fantastic uh, Halloween costume ideas this year. Uh, next up, we have Sonia Green from, of the Green family in Illinois. Uh, three of the four green boys have a primary immunodeficiency and rely on herd immunity to keep them safe. Their mother, Sonia, is professor of law at the University of Illinois. Sonia, how are you tonight? I'm great, thanks. I am loving all of this. Um, this is wonderful. I'm so glad. I'm gonna ask you a very cliche question. I would like to, you to answer, which is better, Chicago style pizza or Chicago dogs? Oh, that's a great question. Um, hot dogs for sure. That's uh, incorrect. So we're gonna move on to our next. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Actually, I'm a aficionado of both. So. Awesome. Tell us why the Chicago dog. Yeah, um, well, it's just a classic. Nobody else has anything like it. Um, and we've got a really fun place called the Wiener Circle that has these billboards where they um, put all kinds of awesome messages. And I think that just, that's what Chicago is all about. So I'll yeah. tell you, I've actually done Chicago dog research in Chicago so that I could bring it back to make the most authentic Chicago dogs I can make in Iowa. I'm not joking. So people have known the saga of me trying to recreate the Chicago dog in my house. That's awesome. I've, I've, I've Facebook photos to prove it. So thank you so much for being here tonight. Tell us about your experience with your family. Yeah. So, um, I'm, um, like you said, I'm a law professor and I have, um, and I research and write in the area of vaccines um, and also assisted reproductive technology. And I have a vested interest in people vaccinating because I'm also a mom. Um, I'm a mom of these four amazing humans who are in my Zoom background. Um, Harrison's the oldest, then I have twins, Holden and Langford. Um, who are um, here and here. And then my youngest is Davis. And these kids are absolutely miracle kids for us. We went through years of fertility treatments. We went through all kinds of procedures. We had a stillbirth, we had a miscarriage. Um, we went through a lot. And these kids are amazing and remarkable um, for many, many reasons. But three of the four have a rare primary immune disease called X-linked agammaglobulinemia. We've got really cute videos of them when they were little trying to say it. Uh, but basically it means that their immune systems are half effective. Um, they don't produce B cells. So they don't produce antibodies. So they have a harder time fighting off some infections. And their immune systems don't have the memory that other people's immune systems do. So they uh, they don't remember when they've gotten something and it's possible that they could get sick again and again. For any vaccine preventable illness that comes around, they are both likelier to get it, unfortunately, and they're also likelier to get very, very sick from it. They're likelier to have the worst side of the effects. For their primary immune disease, um, there thankfully is a treatment. And the treatment, there's no cure yet, and I'm hoping that a cure will come along, but the treatment is every month they get um, an IV and they get immunoglobulins. So Darby, when you were talking about IVs, my boys get IVs too, um, once a month. And with the IVs, we basically build up their immune system and that protection lasts for about 28 days. And then we have to do it all over again. And we do this every month. Um, this is what we do on our end to keep them healthy. And with that, and assuming that there's enough of a community immunity around us, they can do all the things they love to do, um, which include things like playing soccer. Um, my oldest is a computer hacker. Um, they play soccer. Um, one of them, Holden, is a really avid photographer. Um, he likes photographing abandoned buildings. So, you know, there's all sorts of scary germs that could be possible there, but that's his passion. Um, they're basically normal kids, but it is because people around us vaccinate. And so on the positive side, I always have to say how insanely grateful I am to people who vaccinate, to people who make that choice. Um, like Ethan, um, 
uh, first, Ethan, I want to talk to you about law school. So let's connect um, because I think you should go to law school. But also, um, people who vaccinate are literally making my kids' lives possible. And you know, when Dr. Swanson said every illness is a love story, oh my gosh! I mean, that's that's exactly how I feel. Um, and to me, every act of kindness is part of that love story. It's a chapter in our story. And so I'm really grateful to the people who do vaccinate and eternally grateful to people who speak out for vaccines like all of you speaking here. Um, it makes a huge difference in our lives. So keep it up and uh, let's change the world. Thank you, Sonia. Thanks so much for sharing your experiences and struggles with your fantastic family. Yeah, I bet. We really appreciate it. All right, uh, our final contest video is up. It is called Howlable Idea, and it's submitted by Jameson here in Iowa. To vote for this video, you're gonna text IDEA to 22333. What do you think of humans not getting their vaccine? Don't worry, we're up to date. It's that time of year when I roll up my sleeve for my annual flu shot. As Iowa's senior U.S. Senator, I've also got my sleeves rolled up at the policy-making table to protect public health. As you all know, urgent research and development of a COVID-19 vaccine are underway. Through decades of conducting oversight and writing legislation, I've worked to expand access to effective and affordable treatments and cures. In fact, COVID-19 proves why my prescription drug pricing reform bill is more important than ever. Today's historic public health crisis also proves how vital immunizations are to our health and our welfare and our daily life and of course our economy. That's why I've long led efforts to strengthen drug safety and to protect tax dollars. My oversight work focuses on the integrity of drug research and development so that it's safe, so that it's effective, and so it can be trusted. It's imperative to uphold the public trust so Americans are protected from needless death and disease. Keeping vaccinations affordable and accessible will curb the transmission of diseases and protect people from infection. America has led the way in health sciences and medical technology for generations. Investment and entrepreneurial innovations have helped wipe out childhood diseases, find cures, and in the end, save lives. From polio to HIV, hepatitis, and COVID-19, Americans depend on modern medicine to keep us healthy. As chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, I wrote provisions in the CARES Act to ensure Medicare beneficiaries get an FDA-approved COVID vaccine with no cost sharing. I'll continue my advocacy for public and patient health so that Americans of all ages have affordable access to effective vaccines. As always, please keep in touch. Make your voices heard. That makes a big difference. Thank you, Senator Grassley, for being a strong voice for immunization. All right, we are going to our last chance to vote here. Uh, we're gonna close voting in just a minute. So you're gonna wanna get your votes in for your favorite of, the, of tonight's submitted videos. Uh, we're going to go over them here in just a moment. So remember, in order to vote, if you need to do this last minute, you need to uh, text in VAX the Heart 691, all caps, uh, to 22333. And then you need to text the code for the video they like best. Now you can vote for more than one. You're going to get that chance now. 
Uh, you can vote for more than one, but just one vote per video that you want to, to choose. Um, so to vote for Get Vaccinated from Matt in Minnesota, those are uh, Carly Ray Jepsen parody. You're going to text Get Your G E T U R to 22333. Uh, to uh, vote for shoot a goal and get vaccinated our trick soccer shot uh, from Sam and Charlie in Iowa you're going to text goal to you're going to text goal to 22333 to uh, vote for vaccinate and stay safe from Madison in Wisconsin you're going to text stay safe to 22333 and to vote for quick shot from Owen Eleanor and Simon uh, in Wisconsin, text quick shot to 22333. And finally, to vote for Howlable Idea, which we just saw from Jameson in Iowa, text IDEA to 22333. All right, next up, we have Colleen Thomas from Indiana. Colleen is a founding member of Hoosiers Vaccinate. She is the 2019 recipient of the CDC Childhood Immunization Champion Award, uh, representing Indiana. Colleen, how are you tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm Thanks for having well. me. Well, thank you for joining us. So I want you to tell us a little bit about Hoosiers Vaccinate. Okay. I'm going to actually start by telling you about my son, Simon. Okay. So <laughs> go right in. He has the most pinchable chubby cheeks and he gets <laughs> his shoes on the right feet about 50% of the time. And okay. he's also the reason I helped found the advocacy group called Hoosiers mm. Vaccinate. All right, well, tell us more, take it away. Okay, well, Simon, just like Sonia's son, uh, he was born with a primary immunodeficiency called hypogamma globulinemia. It's a little different than her children's condition. And it also means he's missing part of his immune system. Um, so a simple cold or a sinus infection can take a month or more for him to fight it off. The first three years of his life was, he was sick far more than he was not sick. And usually one illness just rolled right into another infection and another illness. Uh, it's been about a seven year process now uh, to get him the treatment he needs to be healthy. And along the way, we learned that even though he's had all of his childhood vaccines, his body doesn't always mount an immune response to them. Uh, as a result, he and others with his condition rely on the people in our community to stay up to date on their immunizations because that reduces the chance that Simon will come into contact with these vaccine preventable diseases that he would have a hard time fighting off. Um, you know, right now during COVID, we're really aware of how our choices and our actions have an impact on the health of people around us, which is something that my family has been very aware of for many years. Uh, but the simple act of getting your flu shot or staying current with your adult boosters or taking your child to the pediatrician to get them up to date on their immunizations shows that you care about protecting people with weakened immune systems compromised immune systems. And that's not just kids like my son, that's transplant recipients, that's chemo patients, newborns, the elderly. Um, the average age of diagnosis for kids with my son's particular condition is 10. So we were fortunate that we were able to catch it at age three, which is very early, but his experience was not typical. There's many people who aren't diagnosed with their particular primary immunodeficiency until adulthood. So there are people in your community right now that rely on herd immunity and they don't even know it. Um, you know, I'm not a medical professional like some of the other speakers have been or a public health employee. I'm a business owner and a mom. Uh, I got involved with vaccine advocacy because of Simon's diagnosis, but really anybody can do it. Anybody can share the message that vaccines are safe and they're effective. It can be as simple as sharing a picture of your flu shot band-aid on social media, or you can even just post a link to the stories of vaccine advocates, like the people that you've heard from tonight. Uh, it's, it's how we give vaccine hesitant people more confidence. Every one of us has the power to spread positive messages about vaccines and save lives. And if none of that has convinced you, 
I I think maybe this will look at those cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really I'm really happy that I got to be a part of this. Thank you, Colleen. We really appreciate it. Where can we find a uh, 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 Hoosiers vaccinate? Uh, they we are have a presence on Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter. Uh, there is a, a Facebook group. We're on Instagram. Just Google it. You'll find and it. We'll is also their website. Um, and you're testing me now. I got to okay. Hoosiers vaccinate. You'll be able to find it. Yeah. I'm sure there's not <laughs> multiple Hoosiers vaccinate no. sites to find. So just sure Google that, that, everybody. All right. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, we are going to transition to a couple of videos. Um, we've been having a very good time tonight, um, and we know how to enjoy ourselves, but we're also advocating for uh, vaccines because it is a very serious issue. Um, we're going to turn to the story of two families who are talking about their own pain in order to help prevent others from suffering the same heartache. Hi, I'm Katie Van Tornow from South Bend, Indiana, and I am a parent advocate with the Indiana Immunization Coalition. I am here with you to celebrate all vaccines across the board, but I have a little bit of a slight love affair with a TDI booster. You see, I became a mom in 2009 to this beautiful baby girl, Callie, after five years of trying and five miscarriages. Callie was the perfect baby. In January of 2010, she contracted a whooping cough and our lives have never been the same since. She passed away on January 30th at 37 days old from whooping cough. Whooping cough, a disease of the past, a disease we don't hear about anymore. To say our lives were shattered would be an understatement. She was the perfect baby. She made me a mom. And when she passed away that morning, our lives were completely shattered. We hit rock bottom. We didn't know what to do. And finally, after a few weeks of grieving, we decided we had to keep her spirit alive. We had to do something that gave her a light. She couldn't speak for herself. We had to become her voice. I researched the internet. I reached out to advocacy groups. I reached out to anybody who would help me realize the importance of the TDAP booster. Did you know that all pregnant women need a TDAP booster between 27 and 36 weeks with each pregnancy? I had no idea. Back in 2010, this wasn't a recommendation from the CDC. It is now. And with every pregnancy that you have, whether you have two in one year, you have three in five years, you have one every 10 years, you need a TDAP booster with every pregnancy. I have been lucky enough to have three children since the passing of Kelly. And with each of those pregnancies, I got a TDAP booster as soon as I was allowed to. I made my entire family get the TDAP booster, husband, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, even my FedEx man went and got one so he could see my <laughs> It is so important to cocoon these babies with everybody who has a TDAP booster because of the fact these babies can't get their boosters or their shots until two months old. So for those first eight weeks, they are so vulnerable, so vulnerable. And it's up to all of us to cocoon them to keep them healthy. I'm asking you to go get your TDAP booster. If you already have it, have, make sure it's up to date. If you don't want to be having a baby, go get a new one. Educate them on the importance of the TDAP booster. If everybody would have had a TDAP booster back when Kelly was born, including myself, I didn't have one. I didn't know I needed one back then. Would she still be here? We have no idea. So go get yours. And while you're there, get a flu shot and tell them Callie sent you. Hi, I'm Angie Wehrkamp. I'm a board member for Families Fighting Flu, a national nonprofit organization dedicated to raising awareness about the seriousness of influenza. In 2015, my daughter Gianna was a vibrant, fearless, funny, two and a half year old little girl who was healthy. This healthy little girl passed away in less than 48 hours after presenting her first symptoms of influenza. One evening she had a fever. The next morning she sounded croupy. I took her to the clinic and she was diagnosed with influenza A. She was prescribed an antiviral and sent home to rest. That evening I took her to bed with me so I could keep a close eye on her. Around 3.30 I woke up with her lifeless body in my arms. 
I gave her CPR until the paramedics came. They worked tirelessly for over half an hour to get her little heart beating again. After we arrived at the hospital, they advised us there was nothing more that they could do. So a few hours later, for the second time that day, my daughter died in my arms because of influenza. But that's not the end of my story. A few weeks later, my son was diagnosed with influenza as well at the same clinic, given the same antivirals, and sent home to rest. Within a few days, he was feeling good. Within a week, he had no symptoms. The difference was he was vaccinated. My husband and I never got the flu that year either, even though both children did. But we were also vaccinated. We failed to make Gianna's vaccination a priority because it was inconvenient to have to go to the clinic to get her vaccination done. And we did not know the facts about influenza or the flu vaccine. We didn't know that the flu is the deadliest vaccine preventable disease in the United States. And we certainly did not know that the flu vaccine didn't just prevent you from getting the flu, but it prevented serious complications and even death from the flu. As you've heard from our story, the flu vaccine works, it is effective, and it is safe. This is why I work so hard to encourage everyone six months and older to please get your flu vaccine every year for yourself, for your family, for your community. Thank you so much, Angie and Katie, for honoring your babies and for sharing them with us tonight. Our next guest is LJ Tan. LJ is the Chief Strategy Officer of Immunization Action Coalition. He lives in Chicago. LJ, how are you? Hey, good, Nathan. How are you? Wow, Welcome. what an event. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't this great? It's great oh, to have awesome. you here. I have to, I have, I am being told to, but also I want to express uh, many thanks for the Immunization Action Coalition um, uh, for hosting tonight's meeting, also for just being quite possibly the best immunization resource out there. I can tell you as a practicing pediatrician, if there's a question that I need to figure out that I don't know, you're the first place that I go to. I know that if there's some you know, some kind of like, come uh, is, is it this many days till this? What if this person has this? Uh, what do I do? I can go to IAC and the answer is always there. So thank you so much for being such a fantastic resource. Thank you, Nathan, for that. We're, we're here. We, we love vaccines. That's why we're celebrating. So thanks again. Really appreciate the call out. Absolutely. Tell us more about IAC and whatever you want to talk about tonight. Oh, thanks so much. Uh, so, so IAC, as you've already given us a great plug, um, immunize.org, please come visit our website. We have everything you're going to ever need to know about vaccinating uh, in terms of just implementing vaccination in your practice, uh, information about uh, why you as a parent want to get your children vaccinated, where we run the gamut across the lifespan. So, so come visit us, immunize.org. So I'm actually, as Nathan, you probably figured out, right? I mean, I'm going to actually talk flu. But I, I just want to call out, I, it's really hard to follow two phenomenal uh, presentation speaking, uh, speakers that just came. I, I think it is so important for us to always remember that when we talk about the statistics and we talk about the, uh, the coverage rates and the effectiveness of vaccines and all of that, um, we, we sometimes lose track of, of how of the impact of immunizations or, or the impact of vaccine preventable diseases. And so, so I think it's, it was wonderful to hear uh, for, about about the impact of these diseases. And so thank you to both the previous speakers for for sharing their uh, their story. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. So but I'm going to talk about flu, and uh, and I think uh, it's extremely important for us to think about why this flu season is so different, right? Of course, we've got COVID-19 disease, and and as we think about COVID-19 disease, we we everyone's asking, so what's going to happen, right? What's going to happen with flu this season? It, it is unique, um, you know. But every flu season is unique. So so what we do know about COVID-19 is that, you know, there might be, we don't know, there might be less flu than usual because we are doing some social distancing and some masking, right? But
But we know that as a country, we're not very compliant with the social distancing and masking procedures, right? So I think we can almost certainly say that we're going to get flu viruses and we're going to get COVID-19 uh, coronavirus circulating at the same time. And we're going to get people co-infected with flu and, and SARS-CoV-2, which is the, co the virus that causes COVID-19. And I think this is the issue, right? We want to hashtag avoid that pandemic because we don't have a vaccine for COVID-19, but we do have a vaccine against flu. And why would anybody want to be co-infected with both? So let's take flu off the table. Uh, and we know not just for you all, I mean, it's us, right? We don't want to get both of them. It would be nasty, but our healthcare system can't handle both of them. You know, we heard so much about surge capacity in the spring and we're going to hear about it again in the fall, right? We, we want to make sure that our systems um, don't get both a surge of flu as well as a surge of COVID-19. And as I'm talking about this, you know, we also want to make sure that the people who are vaccinating and we're targeting are the people that have the same high risk conditions between flu and COVID-19. Because these overlapping high risk conditions between people with flu and people with COVID-19 makes it extremely critical that this flu season, we take flu off the table, right? We do not want people who are obese or people with heart disease, people with diabetes, elderly to get both flu and COVID-19. So I think we need to make sure that people get vaccinated. There's so many beautiful access points out there. Pharmacists are vaccinating, clinicians are vaccinating. You can get vaccinated in parking lots and drive throughs So just go and get vaccinated and know that when you're getting vaccinated, you're, you're safe from COVID-19. If any people, any person can take COVID-19 off the table in terms of infection, it's your healthcare facility. So, so go out, get flu vaccinated get vaccinated. It's never too late to get vaccinated. Keep vaccinating. You love somebody. Thanksgiving, get vaccinated. Christmas, get vaccinated. Happy New Year. New Year's resolution, get vaccinated. And by the way, someone you love, Valentine's Day, give them a flu vaccine. So thanks, Nathan. This is such a wonderful audience. I, I, I think this is such a great celebration of all the good things we do with vaccines. So thanks, Nathan, for allowing me to be here. LJ10, I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for your wisdom tonight. Have a good evening. All right, we are, oh, I'm getting a message incoming here. We are, we are, um, oh, I wanna ask everybody, the message that I am receiving is that everybody who might be participating, make sure that you're muted, please, or anybody who is just watching, just make sure that your mute is on if it's not already. So thank you for that check. Um, we are coming to near the end of our program tonight. Um, I'm very excited for these last two videos that we have. Um, the next two messages are from Charlie Behrens and from Chelsea Clinton. Folks, how are you? It's me, Charlie, the host of the Mandwalk Minute. You know, with flu season coming up, I just want to remind you, get your shots going, okay? Because uh, we get the corona going around, so, you know, the flu is just one more thing that you don't want to deal with. So get your vaccine, and remember, the Vaccinate the Heartland celebration is coming up October 15th, okay? So, you know, we're heading to flu season. Do what you got to do. Keep her moving. As always, go Packers, and you know what, the Bears. Okay, real good. Bye-bye now. Hi, I'm Chelsea Clinton, and I'm here representing New York, proudly. Uh, most of you may know me as my parents' daughter, or maybe as vice chair of the Clinton Foundation, or maybe as a writer. Um, but the reason I'm here is because I know that vaccinations are important. I know that because of my background in health policy, uh, because of the work that I do uh, as a professor at the Mailman School of Public Health at Columbia University, and also as a mom. Uh, I'm the mom of three, and even in COVID, all of my children have been vaccinated on schedule. Um, vaccinations are one of the most successful public health interventions in history, you know, along with good sanitation, uh, vaccinations uh, have saved uh, truly tens of millions of lives. Uh, they've helped beat back uh, and defeat even uh, deadly diseases, including uh, smallpox, and kind of they've put polio uh, in a corner. Uh, they have made extraordinary uh, progress possible against 
uh, measles and pneumonia and so much else. But for vaccinations to continue to be successful so that we don't lose ground against kind of those infectious diseases and so many others, um, we continue to require large scale um, public infrastructure, um, but also public trust and participation. So as scientists do their job and race to produce uh, a safe and effective vaccine against COVID-19 and maybe even more than one, uh, I think the greatest threat to their efforts having the success that they certainly hope they will in providing protection against COVID-19 um, may be from the anti-science movement, um, from the people who don't believe uh, in science, for people who don't believe uh, in the importance of uh, immunization, either against COVID-19 or broadly, and for the people who are uh, politicizing the kind of race for a vaccine or all the work that we need to do to ensure that we're able to vaccinate our frontline workers and our most vulnerable and then all of us. Um, because this shouldn't be a matter of, of politics. Uh, it should be a matter of public health. And this shouldn't be an area where the anti-science and anti-vaccine voices are the loudest. It should be an area where our public health voices, our medical voices, and our science voices are those who we listen to. More than a million lives worldwide have now been lost to COVID-19. More than 200,000 lives here in the United States. Uh, and the World Health Organization lists vaccine hesitancy, the reluctance or the refusal to be vaccinated or to have one's children vaccinated as one of our top 10 global health threats. And they made that distinction even before COVID. And so while vaccine hesitancy isn't new, it's actually as old as kind of vaccination itself, even variolation, kind of vaccine, uh, vaccination's predecessor. Um, what is new is how the anti-vaccine voices and forces have really been able to amplify uh, their anti-science and anti-public health messaging through social media and other online forums. And unfortunately, uh, during COVID-19, uh, the already too loud and kind of kind of too powerful anti-vaccine and anti-science voices have really been able to exploit this moment and they have seized upon it to grow their reach. So we all have to be vigilant in not only keeping ourselves informed, but doing whatever we can to combat misinformation, to combat the anti-science voices in real life and online. Um, ultimately, we will only be able to reach herd immunity enabled kind of through vaccination if we have enough people who are willing to take the vaccine. Again, once of course it's proven safe and effective kind of by a rigorous scientific process and kind of not uh, one polluted by politics or politicking. But once we have a safe and effective vaccine or vaccines, we need people to take them. So we have to build public consensus. We have to build public demand for a safe and effective vaccine once it arrives. Ultimately, that is the only way through COVID-19 and forward. And we have to do everything we can to combat misinformation and to continue to promote the use of a vaccination against COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. And we have to do that as if our lives depend on it because they do. Thank you so much for those messages, Charlie and Chelsea. Uh, we have our last interview of the evening. We have Amy Pisani from Vaccinate Your Family up next. Uh, she's the executive director of Vaccinate Your Family. Um, <laughs> I'm being asked to ask you, Amy, which Midwestern state is your, your favorite and why is it Iowa? Why is it Iowa? Let's see. <laughs> um, Gosh, I visited so many states with our founders, Rosalind Carter and Betty Bumpers. I have to say North Dakota. Um, mm. We had an amazing trip in North Dakota. And oh. unfortunately, we were heading to South Dakota, but Ronald Reagan passed away. And so Mrs. Carter had to leave. Um, on our way home, they gave us a box of pretzel, uh, 
chocolate covered potato chips to take on the plane and our plane got delayed. And so I ate that whole box myself. And so North Dakota wow. is my favorite. That sounds fantastic. Now my producer is um, disappointed. She's disappointed in me for not saying why is your favorite Minnesota and she's disappointed in you for not answering Minnesota. But we're going to move past that. <laughs> Uh, I have a few questions for you. Can you tell us how you got involved in the vaccine world? Gosh, I was really young. I was 26. I um, was working for the American Nurses Association. Everybody knew I loved children. I wanted to actually work with deaf children. I got my, my master's um, at a deaf university. And um, I interviewed for this amazing job uh, working in vaccines for Rosalind Carter and Betty Bumpers. And henceforth, um, there really aren't many diseases that cause deafness anymore because of vaccines. So as the world turns. <laughs> and what kind of local advocacy are you involved in now? So, well, that's a great question, Nathan. And I think it's really easy to kind of, um, when you work at the federal level, to kind of like go in a cave and say, I don't really want to get involved at the local level because like, I don't want my neighbors to know what I do. But you have to get involved at the local level because you can't, um, there's just so much going on at the state level. Like we're trying to actually pass in my state um, a law removing the religious exempt, the non-medical exemptions. So it was a 23 hour um, battle royale. Um, and we were the only um, bill to make it out of the public, about, out of the public health committee. Um, but unfortunately COVID started. So and we're going to win the battle in January. Um, and I just actually coincidentally met my next door neighbor today. And she told me that she has four anti-vaccine people working in her office and she's losing her mind. And now I have a new friend and I have to tell her, come to vaccinate your family. We'll give you all the answers. Right. And now when you talk about legislative advocacy, I think that's an area that a lot of people probably makes them a little bit like squeamish when they mm -hmm. think about, well, how do I advocate on the legislative level? Do you have to be an expert in lawmaking to be able to contact your lawmakers about vaccines? No, they don't, I don't even think you should be an expert in vaccines to contact your lawmaker. They need to hear from regular people. Mm. Um, when I contact my state um, and my local legislators, it's always about being a mom. My son actually um, was hospitalized twice for influenza as a baby. We became a member of Family Fighting Flu my story usually starts with that. And that's how I became incredibly passionate because I realized how lucky we are that my son survived. Um, but you know, he's high risk, he's got asthma and um, he's in college now and he gets his own flu vaccine. He just got his yesterday, I tweeted it out. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, how can the folks watching from home contact their lawmakers right now? Okay, so it's so easy. I made this cute little thing. Let's see if it works. Is it, is it Looks great. coming up? Okay. So you go to vaccinate your family. There we go. It's vaccinate your family slash vax the heartland. So it's vaccinate your family.org slash vax the heartland. And when you go there, it's really simple. You just put in your name and it says, um, I just watched this amazing webinar about vax the heartland. And I really want you to get involved as the legislator. We think it's really important that you support vaccines, that you support um, public health, that you support making sure registries are up and running so COVID can be um, disseminated and so that we can help eliminate disparities in health. It does everything for you. You just put in your name and your zip code and it shoots out the email for you to your legislator. Wham, bam, boom, it's so easy. Fantastic. Amy Pisani of Vaccinate Your Family, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, I also wanna take this time to thank BioForward for sponsoring our video contest. Uh, I want to thank all of our entrants. We loved all of the videos, every single one. Our runner-up on the video contest is Quick Shot from Owen, Eleanor, and Simon in Wisconsin. And our grand prize winner is Howlable Idea from Jameson in Iowa. So Iowa takes the cup tonight. Congratulations, Iowa. Congratulations, Jameson. Fantastic job. Good job, Wisconsin. You did well, but, but congratulations, Iowa. Congratulations to all of our entrants tonight. Um, I wanna thank everybody for joining us. We shared some funny moments. We had some difficult memories. We had some important information today and we need you to act now. 
we need you to take what you saw tonight and tell your friends and family about it. And most importantly, we want you to go visit Vaccinate Your Family's website. Send a special Heartland message to your own lawmakers. Remember, that's vaccinateyourfamily.org slash vax the heartland. Thank you, everybody, for being here and good night.